Did you find about the women with the yeah, m- yeah, investments? I was, I was waiting to. Uh, oh, was, okay, good. From uh, Newsweek in July. Okay, what does it say? It's uh, like right here. Mm, the upper echelons of money and power, blah, blah, blah. According to Forbes, <clears throat> the world's 15 wealthiest people are men. Women only make up 10% of the top 100. Separate wealthiest women in the world. Most of their money comes from their male relatives or husbands. Yeah. The top 10 wealthiest men made their fortunes themselves. Now, who are the top 10 wealthiest women that didn't Isn't get that, it from divorce? Oh, here they go. Though. Oprah's got to be Hold up there. Hold on a second. Yeah, she's up there. The first self-made woman on the list is, wow, I don't know how to say this woman's name. Z-H-O-U. That's one word. Q-U-N-F-E-I. Zhu Kunfi, who was born to a poor family in China, dropped out of school at 16. She went on to found an enormously successful technology company. Uh, but if you put men back into the equation, she's only 198th richest person in the world. Hmm. No matter how you feel about the concept of a few people hoarding enormous wealth, the notion that women can only access money and power through their families or husbands seems medieval at best. Yet we see it occur at the very top of many professions outside of the business world. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, most people. Can you read the next stuff? Yeah, a About recent high-profile example is Hillary Clinton. During her presidential campaign, the first female major party nominee, she campaigned on a ticket of empowerment, yet although she is accomplished in her own right, she entered politics as the wife of Bill Clinton and has undoubtedly benefited from his prestige and connections. Yeah, well, that's true, but I just, she I also thought, I was, thought it was a lawyer. About money. I didn't mean for you to read that. Uh, she was a lawyer and a, you know, she was a senator. Now, Oprah's up there as the yeah. world's richest women. Period. Like that, have made it she, on their own. That's a weird thing because they're saying. I'm not a big fan of Hillary Clinton, but by saying she definitely entered because she was, you know, she was married to him, but she was a lawyer. I mean, she's she's an accomplished person. She's she's educated, accomplished. She was a senator. I don't think that makes sense. I hate when people say to shit like that. You know what? You're at the right place at the right time, bitch. And that's you jumped. And you jumped. Yeah. You jumped, bitch. So that's the problem. I'm not mad at nobody. You can't say she got into bar. Yeah. <laughs> she may be a little help, a push here, a call here, but she jumped. There's a great book I'm reading right now. It's called Outliers by Malcolm McDowell. It's fucking great. And it's all about what makes people successful and why they were successful. And there are a lot of factors, man. There's a lot of factors in when you were born. Like what, Like a lot of it, he, he, he goes on about hockey players, about professional hockey players, that almost all of them were born at a certain time so that they were at the end of the age cutoff. So like say if you know, you're between 10 and 11, when you go into, what is that, fifth grade? You are, if you're one of the oldest kids, you have a way better chance of being successful at hockey because your body's more mature than whether you're one of the youngest kids that goes into sixth grade. So whether you're fifth grade or sixth grade, like what year you were born is a big factor. So the kids that were born later, so that they're older, rather, the kids that, that, that are older when they enter into the fifth grade or sixth grade, they're uh, like... Across the board, unanimously, all the top-level professionals were all older kids in younger grades. So that they're playing against smaller kids. They get more time. They, they're better. So they get more coaching. They get more hours playing. There's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors in, like, one of the things about Bill Gates, that there was, it's a, there's a whole great chapter on Bill Gates and about when Bill Gates was young, the, <clears throat> the school that he went to had a computer class that uh, allowed him to do coding, and then he got into the University of Washington. They would let him get into their, their computer room from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. They had this open block, so him and his friends would sneak into that place at 3 o'clock in the morning. So all these, all these different factors that lead to someone being like super successful, it's not just that you work hard. It's sometimes you get these weird advantages in life. There's a bunch of things. Like, for sure, hard work plays a factor. If you don't do nothing, you just sit around and, and, and woe is me and cry and, and think the world's fucked, you're not going anywhere. 
But the people that make it to the very top, the Bill Gates, the Steve Jobs, they have a bunch of things going for them. It's not just hard work. It's also circumstance, fortune, where they are, what, you know, who's around them, who, who, who encourages them. There's, there's a bunch of what time they were born and what, you know, what age they were when th certain things happened in the world. There's a bunch of factors. But for all those chicks, it's just marrying the right dude. <laughs> Getting no. divorced. Getting paid. I know a lady who uh, just got paid from a divorce, and she's just shooting shit into her face and banging 20-year-olds now. It's hilarious. She's in her late 40s, banging 20-year-old dudes. <laughs> How rough must that be? To, to <laughs> it's cut, funny, man. To cut that check. I For the what, guy? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a it's hard. rough. I've, I've known guys. I knew a guy who uh, he cut a check for somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 million. Yeah. To his ex. I know a guy who cuts a check <laughs> for 30 grand a month, G. <clears throat> 30 grand a month. He oh, I know a, a couple guys who pay and that. that. And that was, that was not beside the half million up front. Oh, yeah. The yeah. house. Yep. Two cars. Mm -hmm. like he just walked away. I know a guy who's paying close to that, and he hasn't even seen his wife. He's been married to a new woman, a different woman, for 14 years. At least, yeah, 14 years. And he was only married to that lady for 12. And he's still cutting her checks. And no kids. He's got kids with a new woman. The old woman, no kids. <coughs> still cutting her fat checks. Tries to bring it to court, try to reduce the amount of money. She fights him tooth and nail. You son of a bitch, you left me. He left her 14 fucking years ago, man. They were only together for 12 years. It's like she doesn't want to work. He, it's, he fucked her so hard she can't work anymore. <laughs> it's crazy. If it was a man, if the situation was reversed and a guy was dating a girl and they were dating for 12 years and she was like, I'm tired of this. I'm going to go fuck some new dude. And the guy took her to court, got money from her, and wanted money still 14 years later. What kind of a fucking man would that be? Like, get a job! Go do something with your life. You are a human being. You met another human being, you spent some time with them, they don't want to be with you anymore, it's over! Like, this, there's, no, there's no children now, what to take are you going care of. To, what do you tell the judge that you want your lifestyle, right? Yes. The lifestyle that you were accustomed to. I want to maintain to. my lifestyle, judge. I like to buy nice purses, I like to walk my little dog, I like to put them in a little, a little purse. Now, in California, there's different factors also. You have to be with that person for 10 years or something, right? There's uh, little this, factors, this, a couple yeah. by the ways. There's, there's factors, and they change, you know, depending upon the laws, and they, they change depending upon how much money you make. And, you know, this, my friend was pretty wealthy. He did well. But the guy who I know that had to pay $50 million, he's real successful, obviously. That, I mean, you got to make a lot of money to give your wife $50 million. But... He still had to give her fifty million. I see the kid. Listen, I see the kid point. Five zero, baby. <laughs> I see the I see the child support point, uh, here's the and list. I see a little bit of, of help. There's the list. Here's the unique one. Oh, Madonna's divorce from Guy Ritchie, estimated seventy six to ninety two million. Oh, <gasps> he had she had to give him. That's, I mean, she's the first woman listed first on this. Damn, <laughs> she had to give him seventy six million. Way to go, Guy Ritchie. <laughs> I like to have him back here. Now I know how you buy those suits, motherfucker. Now what's his name? Pays the singer from Bush. Look at this. Michael Jordan's divorce from Juanita Jordan, one sixty-eight million. <laughs> Mel Gibson's divorce in two thousand six after twenty-six years. Four hundred and twenty-five million. God damn! Stop Shh. scrolling. Look at this. Jesus Christ. Steve Wynn's divorce, two thousand twenty. <gasps> One billion. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Steve Wynn. One Bill Yun. Rupert Murdoch's divorce in 1990 in 1999 after 31 years of marriage. 1.7 billion. Neil Diamond, 150. Harrison mm. Ford, 118 million. Whoa, Harrison Ford.